Hey, Josh. Hey there, how you doing? Good, how are you doing? Uh, buried. <laughs> the, um, sorry, you know, the way um, <clears throat> events go, whether they're online or in person, somehow everything for all of the events during like a six month period ends up being due at the same time. It does, yes. <clears throat> yeah, I'm with you there. Yeah, so, I was just looking at the, the recordings for KubeCon EU are due um, like, I don't know, like in a few weeks. Oof, yeah, well, I better see what kind of help Carolyn needs. The, um... Yeah, I think they were due like, well, I think they were due um, beginning of April, but I'm going to be, or maybe it was the end of March. Okay. It's due, it's due when I'm actually taking a week of holiday, so I'll have to do it before then. And it's a new talk, so I actually have to write it. Yeah. What are you, what are you doing a talk on? Uh, evaluating business risk for cloud native projects. Oh, wow. Cool. Okay. So, yeah. So I'll talk about things like company owned versus, versus foundation, um, contributor risk, organizational yeah. risk, that kind of stuff. I've been doing some internal presentations on that because I'm trying to get, you know, there are certain companies that have been more problematic than others. So I'm trying to get people to think about the business risk of adopting their open source projects. Um, but I've got, you know, I've got a great example, right? I've got the whole like Elasticsearch Kibana example of, you know, the licensing risk that can happen with company owned projects. But I've got some stuff to work with. Cause like I said, I've been doing some internal versions of this presentation. All right, just endorsing um, the new SIG storage track leads, SIG storage chairs for CNCF. So. But I did actually get a chance to work on, or start uh, work on loosely, start thinking about the charter resource doc. Um, so I threw that on the agenda. I haven't actually written anything yet. Mm -hmm. I started looking at it and then I just had a whole bunch of questions and I was like, well, the meeting's today, so. The, um, yeah, okay. I um, wonder if anyone else is going to join us. So I get, um, okay, well, let's go ahead and get started. So I guess one of my questions is, let me give you some background. Prime, so yeah, so okay. when I approach something like this, I like yeah. to, I like to just look at some examples. That's always how I start something. Right. So let me see what other projects have done. I clicked through the GitHub repositories of every single CNCF graduated project, searched for the word charter in that organization, GitHub organization, and came yeah. up with not much. What I came up with was several of the projects said that they follow the values in the CNCF charter. And Kubernetes and TickB had um, SIG charter templates. But no, I, even for Kubernetes, I couldn't find like the overall charter for the whole org like for the whole like kubernetes as a whole which i th thought we had and interestingly enough several of the i ran into several references where people talk about you know the charter of this project isn't to do this or is to do this um but it's just like in conversation but i couldn't actually find the charters um which led me to the question um is this 
so so is this something that we believe that CNCF projects need to have? And does it need to be something different from the CNCF charter? So, so like, do we need this? Um, or is there something else I should be working on instead? Um, if we do think we need it, like I do think charters are Im important to define. Um, if we do define it, you know, is it just is it just something optional? And do we define it as like a template or series of templates? Or do we do just kind of an informational how to resource doc like I did with the leadership selection? I just want to get your ideas before I went any further on this because I was shocked that I couldn't yeah. find any charters for um, the your graduated projects. I'm I'm actually not shocked. Um, <laughs> I can't think I can only think of a handful of open source projects I could name that do have a formal written charter. Okay. Um, the, um, I mean, like Fedora has one. Um, I, but, you know, Fedora is partly because of the project's relationship with Red Hat, yep. kind of extraordinarily process oriented. Yeah. Um, the, um, So um, I think we're in a situation, regardless of whether or not open source projects should have, should have charters, if we're starting down this road, we have to recognize that it is not common practice to have a charter. And therefore, we're going to have to start from the question of why should they have a charter, mm -hmm. um, rather than starting from the question of what should be in it. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's worth exploring, because if you think about it, one of the biggest sets of arguments you have in an open source project is scope. Um, yeah. And scope is one of those things that you define in a charter. Yeah. Um, the, um, so, um, you know, so you actually kind of wonder how many should we merge this arguments that could have been dramatically shortened if the projects had had charters mm -hmm. uh, that said what they did and what they did not do. Yeah. Um, the um, but um, and the charter can be relatively informal. It doesn't. Part of the reason I suspect I'm not finding a, a charter is mm -hmm. that if I look at the first few paragraphs of like either the governance docs or the readme docs, I'm probably going to find something that looks a little bit like a charter. Um, and so maybe, maybe we don't need a charter charter, but maybe we just need, you know, something that specifies what, what your project does and doesn't do. Yeah. Although, I mean, that said, I can think of quite a few projects where the governance docs tell you who decides, but they don't tell you yeah. anything about a mission, for example, yep. um, and our own templates do not have a section for mission and scope information. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, one of the other questions about that is, um, is whether or not we should be adding this to our own templates. Mm -hmm. Because if we think it's a good thing for open source projects, for CNC projects that have charters, then our templates should reflect that. Yeah. Whether it's a separate charter template or whether it's we add a, you know, mission section to every governance template that we have. Yeah. Um, and um, now that you brought it up, that sounds like a really good idea. Um, the um, so. I mean, I guess one of the questions is if, I mean, there's an obvious reason, because actually if you think about it, the charter for the CNCF is one section on mission, one, sec one section on mission 
and one, you know, we've got mission practices values, and then the rest of it is all governance. Yeah. So even in the example of the CNCF, um, it's really more of a, this section should be at the beginning of your governance documents. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think. Follow me. Yep, totally. I think I think what I'll do in this case is maybe maybe start with a resources doc that outlines why it's important to define kind of the mission, the values, the you know loosely mm -hmm. define the charter for your for your project, um, and then once I have that resource doc, we can look at how we might want to incorporate um, something into the templates. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that sounds great, you know, and let okay. me know when you've got some kind of draft up because I can add some of the pragmatic stuff like deciding what your scope is at the point. Waiting to decide what your scope is until you receive a PR is a very expensive way to do things. <laughs> yep. Um, the um, Okay. Um, do we want to do it as, do, do you have any preference? Uh, Google Doc, HackMD. I think if we're um, collaborating on the text, probably wait to PR it until later, unless you want to, yeah. I can. I mean, no, 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 no. Think, things harder. that we're heavily editing, um, PRs are problematic. Yeah. Um, as, as we've already witnessed with, say, this <laughs> document. Where, where it's like, you have to check all the tabs in GitHub to find all the feedback. None of it, it's not all collected in one place. No, it's, um, it's a pain in the ass, for yeah, sure. Yeah, so um, the, um, ah, it's so annoying. You know, years, a couple of years ago, um, uh, back when we, the Kubernetes project was actively talking to, to GitHub about things we would love to see in GitHub. They made noises that they were going to add some sort of, uh, you know, doc markup comment thing. Um, but what we got was GitHub discussions, which just are not adequate. Yeah, agreed. The, um, so probably it was technically too hard. Although I don't know if HackMD can do it. <laughs> I mean, the HackMD code base is not large. Really? Yeah, it, it's, it's based on, it's open source code. Um, and it's a pretty small project, so. Well, do you want to do you want me to create it as HackMD or Google Doc? I'm good either one. Like I said, either one. Okay. Um, the advantage of HackMD is, you know, it's a bit more accessible and you don't have the kind of permissions issues, et cetera. The advantage of Google Docs is you actually get notified when somebody comments on your stuff. <laughs> so, yes. the, um, so either way works. Okay. Can decide later. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, it sounds good. And then cool. we'll do that. And I will look into getting, I mean, I'll get the sub projects thing through the way it is right now. And then I will look at getting a, um, you know, and one of the things we have to decide is, right, because because we actually, the CNCF is a good template for the sort of complete version, right? Mm -hmm. because you have mission practices and values. But that does feel like a little much for most open source projects. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, um, like I feel like for most open source projects, mission would probably be, well, mission and scope is actually honestly more, more where I see projects falling down. I don't know about you. Like what's this project for? Like, oh my God, I mean, completely, that also the other benefit of mission is for advocacy. Yeah. Because I cannot tell you the number of times, you know, in my role at Red Hat, where I go to one of the projects we sponsor and I look at their webpage and I say, okay, first of all, tell me, what is this project for? Yeah. <laughs> what does it do? <laughs> Why does it do it? <laughs> yep. And um, and then scope, the source of endless, you know, pull, I, pull review. Yeah, scope, scope is actually where I see most of the, most of the problem. Yeah. Yeah, the um, and that way you can have your arguments about scope, and have them actually be about scope rather than under the guise of arguing about somebody's code quality. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
the um, um, the tough part is going to be finding some good examples because people are going to need them since this is not currently a regular practice. Yeah. And the problem is it's hard to template because it's going to vary so much according to what the project is. Well, I'll poke around BM's um, yeah. collection of useful stuff like this, useful governance docs for projects and see if I can find some examples. Yep. Um, I'll also ping Vicky and see if she can recommend anything in particular in her resource li library that, well, Vicky and the foundations list, because people might have good examples there. Okay. Um, the, I can also uh, ask on the to do to, to do group list. Yep, too. would be the other place. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, I've been buried in events land, so if we go over my issues and PRs, you will see they have made no progress in the last <laughs> few weeks um, because I have been buried. Um, the uh, do, wait, why are we showing nothing open? Uh, oh, because it's not it's not there. It's in the templates. Uh, this is just SIG contributor strategy. Tagged, they're tagged as governance. You can see the um, it's lit for with the label working group governance. If you look at the URL, you see what I mean. Okay. Oof! Nothing in RPRs is tagged. Oh, it used to be. No, no, I should actually go through and tag all these. <laughs> um, whoa, and what on earth is this? Oh, no. Okay, I'll need to look there. Um, from Michael Hall. The, um, okay, anyway. Okay. Um, yeah, and otherwise I'll, I'll rip through this. I actually put a note here. Um, Josh to tag all the PRs. Because I realize actually I've not been getting alerted on PRs, but that's because none of them are tagged. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, uh, um. So, um yeah but for the rest um and i don't see any new issues yeah. nope no it's just the our general slog of adding lots of new content yep um the um i have a bunch of notes for stuff like you know Hey, you have to accept the IP policy of the CNCF. What actual concrete steps do you have to take? Given that I've done that particular dance five or six times now, <laughs> um, the um, including discovering why IO domains are problematic. The um, so um, it turns out the IO TLD has very few rules. Also, a bad history. Yep. So, um, yeah, I was talking to somebody, uh, most of the big like financial companies actually block the .io domain. Wow. So anything on a .io site they can't get to unless they talk to their IT department and get specific sites whitelisted. Oof. This came up so in a all... group call the other day and one, one person who works at either a financial institution or a relatively conservative company and another person chimed up and they were like, oh yeah, us too. And I was like, I've never heard of this. But apparently, because they have no rules, they're super problematic, and there's all kinds of inappropriate stuff on the .io domains. Yeah, 
So not going to register any more projects at .io, but in the meantime, I have projects that, you know, I have to go through the steps of actually moving to something else. Um, the, um, um, so we'll see. Um, Okay, um, so yeah, so no, no new issues, no real progress on issues. Mm -hmm. um, the um, Funny how we had this whole maintainer question for the first, you know, six months of the SIG existing, and now nobody cares anymore. Um, <laughs> yeah. no, that's right. <laughs> well, the, the problem is one of the problems that we have here is that, and impartial observer can actually look at how an individual project is run and make an evaluation as to whether or not they are actually open to um, contributions and control beyond the original sponsoring entity. Yeah. But defining a set of rules for that is hard. It is. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because um, how projects are run varies a lot. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, you know, people have incentives to make things look better than they are. The, um, so, and it's but, also, I mean, frankly, it's, it's also something that, that can be just hard to execute on because yeah. in a lot of cases, there's just not really anybody else interested. And how do you find other people who are interested to get them to contribute? And then how do you grow that into more contributors? And it's just, yeah, it's a, it's a hard problem. So I, I totally feel for yeah. the, the projects that are struggling with it, but I, I do think it's, I do think it's important. Yeah. Well, and the, the, I guess the core question, obviously the core sort of argument that they had around that is, you know, what about projects that are, successful from a user perspective, but not successful from a contributor perspective. Mm -hmm. Now, the current CNCF stance is those projects should not advance to graduate. Yeah. But there are definitely people who disagree. Um, the, um, I mean, that's part of the promise of putting it under the, the CNCF, right? Is that it's no longer yeah. your company's project. Yeah. And you can't continue to treat it like your company's project and get all the benefits that you get from being under the CNCF. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't work that yep. way. And it's, it's hard work to get other companies in some cases mm -hmm. interested in your project. And you need to put in that work if you want the, if you want the CNCF graduated benefits. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, but there was a proposal about three months ago to change the multi-organization rule to something else. But that proposal was never sustained by a vote of the TOC. So I'm going to assume that it is no longer a thing. <laughs> um, and um, particularly given that we have a new TOC now. Yeah. Um, the, um, and, um, and, and, and the, creating a clarifying document with examples of, you know, how you can be multi-organization um, uh, is still on our to-do list. The, um, so, okay. Cool. Um, yeah, okay. That's about it. Yeah, um, I, think we're, I think we're probably done. Yep, I will yep. object. It's 6.30 here. I can go have dinner and a martini. Enjoy. I, right. 
if I have a martini, that's the end of my evening. But. <laughs> oh, it's 6.30. The, um, yeah, but it could be the end of your evening. So <laughs> exactly. <problem>. Right. <laughs> All right, okay. take care. Great chatting with you, Josh. Good night. Bye-bye.